Now we go to NRL range. This is the bigger range we have. We are uh, we started to we are under process to get the ARI 550 uh, approval at the moment. Uh, we have uh, we divide this uh, the NRL range in two main group. One group with a uh, 1.2, 1 1.1, 1.1 1 .1 meter uh, wide and one with 2.2 meter wide. Uh, we call the first uh, line NRI 280 up to 750, and the big one from NRI 800 to 3600. This range. Uh, is very big. Is one of the best uh, uh, we sell in Europe. Twenty-two thousand chillers every year, and let me say uh, this uh, kind of chill we have uh, eight thousand pieces. Is this kind uh, of unit? They are very reliable, very good, versatile. We can do heating, cooling, uh, use for free cooling for many different applications. We use this unit for comfort. We use this unit for uh, process cooling. We use this unit for data center, for different <coughs> As you can see, in cooling only, we start from cooling only with a minimum COP of 2.8, like the ASHRAE 90.1. We have a cooling 13.7 ton up to 50 ton with uh, 230, 360, 460 and also 575 for, for Canadian market. Then we have, uh, this is the cooling only, then we have the heat pump system where we have the cooling like you seen above, a little bit less because we, we try when in our concept, when we design a heat pump we consider that the unit should have uh, a very good uh, uh, performance in efficiency when we use the unit as a heat pump. So we enhance the uh, performance as a heat pump. And so the, in cooling, we reduce a little bit the, the capacity, but just slightly different. In cooling, we have 13 ton, and in heating, almost 14 ton. And we got up to 49.5 in cooling and 250 in heating, with the same three voltages available. Then we have the this is the what we call the uh, uh, sh short unit, I, I would say skinny, a skinny, skinny unit, 1.1 meter wide. Then we go up to the the larger unit. And we go from 53 ton to 220 ton uh, cooling. Or we still have a heat pump with a very high capacity. And this is very good for office block where they have a, usually office block, they, uh, they have a very simple heating system. Usually they have a small water pipe with a fast connection with fan coils connected all together or cassette. And they have, uh, uh, we can go in heating from 55.5 ton to, ah, but here we shouldn't use, we should have used BTU, right? No. Ah, also in ton. Oh, for oh tons, no, no, yeah, it should be BTU. Or. Should be BTU, sorry for this. Yeah. But we, we go up in heating, this is, we have to change the next presentation. Sorry, Jim. Don't be sorry. We express uh, the heating in ton as well, but okay, capacity is that one. 2 to 118 ton, always on the same, on the same, uh, with the three voltages available. As I said before, ASHRAE 90.1, so minimum COP in cooling is 2.8. We have the heating and cooling mode available. We have a free cooling available that we will see later how we we designed the free cooling, which is a little bit different than what we have seen here. Uh, 
very high efficient, okay, in cooling minimum is 3.3, and COP in heating is 3.03. Uh, refrigerant R410 and working limit we go with air 5 degree water 104 or air 32 water 131 in cooling air 95 water 21 air 115 water 40 this is the working limit of the unit we have 11 units available with power supply 230, three phases. 21 units available with power supply 460 or 575, 360. Standards, we comply with the ARI 550 and uh, ASHRAE 90.1, UL and ETL. Maximum water out is 131 Fahrenheit for heating, and minimum water out 21.2 for cooling. Configurator, here is much more wider than before. Like I said, okay, here is the uh, same situation to get uh, uh, low uh, water out uh, is um, available, and this is for winery or brewery uh, application. Then we have uh, the type could be cooling only, heat pump, free cooling, free cooling glycol free. This is typical for process cooling application where they have a mold where they cannot use the glycol. So what we do is that we must use the glycol on the coil but we insert another uh, heat exchanger in between where we can use, uh, uh, we have the glycol between the coils, the free cool water coil and uh, this heat exchanger and then we go directly to the molding to the, to the factory with the clean water in the factory. On the portion of the pipe that maybe stay outside we use uh, electric heat on the pipe to, for a safety reason only. Then we can have uh, on this kind of unit also heat recovery. We can get, okay, without recovery or with the superheater. In this case, when we are cooling, we can get 30% uh, recovery, heat recovery maybe to, hot, to get hot water for domestic water. Usually, if we have an office block, they installed the superheater and they connected the superheater with a, with a tank. So when they are cooling in uh, summer, they get free of charge hot water in, in the tank. So they use several times the, the superheater. Or if they need more heat, we can go for total heat recovery. In this case, we can get 100% of the cooling capacity. We can get back in the heating and heat uh, something we need to heat. I don't know, maybe large volume of water or whatever. So we can get total heat recovery. We have two versions available, high efficiency or high efficiency low noise version coil like we have seen before with a four type of coil standard with a copper co copper copper tin plated or epoxy coated we can have also a version without evaporator means if the primary if we use just an ending unit to use uh, for certain applications they need 100% fresh air in the system we can produce the unit without evaporator and use the evaporator directly in the, uh, in the unit and so use this unit as a condensing unit uh, then we have the three power supply we discussed before available and then we have a different up to 220 ton, we can provide unit what we call plug and play. And so this is a very big saving 
in time installation time uh, for the contractor because you connect the water clean the filter like the unit with the uh, two tone uh, we discussed before and this is a very extremely good because this will reduce a lot the installation time and uh, but most of all uh, there is uh, all the problems relates to the water side what we noticed in Europe that and 90 out of 100 the main problem we have got uh, with the installation was relates to the water side because refrigerant, to be honest, we, all these units are tested 100% in our plant. When I say 100%, I say in a real condition, till the working limit of the unit. And uh, when we install the unit, if we don't provide the pump, the water kit, the flow switch, maybe several times there was a wrong connection of the flow switch or uh, wrong size of the pump and so this is sometimes happen uh, in the system and actually that's the reason why we make available very different option we tank uh, low head pump tank low head pump and spare pump because when you have a large installation several times the consultant requires a spare pump to be installed so the spare pump in order to be efficient need to work and so we do with our control the automatic we swap the pump uh, we work with the spare sometime and then we turn with the standard pump in order to keep the, both pump running and uh, and get the, the spare pump uh, for sure running when when we need the spare pump then we can get the tank with the high head pump tank with high head pump and spare pump or just the pump we can get with the hydraulic kit but if we have a sufficient quantity of water in the system we don't need the pump the tank we can get just the pump installed in this in the unit we go for the layout of the unit as you can see here this is a an example you can get the pump here we can get a filter we have a loading station here we have a pressure gauge on the system and we have a, a, a sensor that if the pressure is less than one bar, we don't start the unit. This is something to prevent possible default of the unit. If we don't have water flow enough or enough pressure, we can get problem, we can froze the, the evaporator. And so there is a, a, we have also an electric heater inside the tank for winter even if we use glycol, but we have an extra safety uh, that when, when it's very low temperature, we activate the electric heater. We have the flow switch installed here. Uh, we have a discharge system. If we need to discharge the water inside the system, we have a, a, the vent here to discharge the water. Air vent is on the top here. and the, expansion base what, what, when I said plug and play is that uh, we connect the water connect the energy start up the unit clean the filter and the unit run also for up to 220 ton this is the bigger unit in this case we use double trio we call tandem or trio compressor definitely this unit is very efficient in particular in part load because in one refrigerant circuit you get three compressors working together and so when you switch off one compressor the other two compressors have a very wide condensing condenser and so they have a very very big efficiency do you ever put drives variable frequency drives on the pumps yes we can with this unit we can work with um, variable speed pump on the primary or you the can second you? yes we can install it but we need uh, uh, in this case, we require a little bit more information yeah. of, the, of the system. We have a limit down to maximum variation is 10% per minute, uh, down to 30% of the nominal capacity. 
this is the limit for VSD variables, P pump we use. But we use this several times. Yeah.